As part of the Church of England here in Stafford, we are delighted to be able to share together in praise and worship during these difficult times. Much of the service follows the words that have been set out to the, sent out to the members of the two churches. But if you don't have them, then please don't worry, as the message is the same. We, as Christians, follow the way, the truth, and the life that was shown to us by Jesus Christ, the Son of God and our Saviour. I want to thank Alison Thomas in particular this morning, as she has led us through the Pilgrim Cross on a Tuesday night for several weeks. And in a casual conversation, I happen to mention the upside downness of the message as given to us by Jesus. And this has led to my uh, choice of hymns, scripture, and response today. So let us uh, gather and prepare to approach our God, our Heavenly Father, during this service, and to invite the Holy Spirit to direct our thoughts during this time. Let us worship God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us say together our opening prayer. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All our music today has been provided by Tony Mur Murley, Jeff Moore and Jim Marsden. And I thank them for us, for your ministry to us during these long months of lockdown. And our hymn is The Kingdom of God. the prayer for the day O God the protector of all who trust in you without whom nothing is strong nothing is holy increase and multiply on us your mercy 
that with, a, with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. During the past few days, there will have been times when we have fallen short of God's expectations, but he is a willing and loving God, keen to hear us when we say sorry. Let us say together the words in bold. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing, for failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us praise God for his goodness. Now we give you thanks because you, because you call us to live in your city while we look for the city which is to come, designed and built by you with eternal foundations to which we journey as citizens in heaven. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Let us sing together to him seek ye first the kingdom of God.
Our readings today are from Isaiah, a prophet of the Lord, whose words are an inspiration over many centuries and that were often used by Jesus during his ministry. Then from Paul, whose words we hear today could be seen as a reflection on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And I've asked Carol and Jerry to give us quite different versions of the Sermon on the Mount, so to speak. The Sermon on the Mount is very familiar to most of us, so I ask you to be prepared, perhaps to be surprised by the readings, and to be prepared to hear afresh. Thank you. Hearing and responding to the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> the year of the Lord's favour. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to pro proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind me up the, the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. The next reading is from Romans 12, 9 to 21. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love, honour one another above yourselves. Never lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the devil's version of the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are too tired, too busy, too distracted to spend an hour once a week with their fellow Christians in church. They are my best workers. Blessed are those Christians who wait to be asked and expect to be thanked. I can use them. Blessed are the touchy. With a bit of luck, they may stop going to church. They are my missionaries. Blessed are those who are very religious but get on end with everyone's nerves. They are mine forever. Blessed are the troublemakers. They should be called my children. Blessed are those who have no time to pray. 
they are easy prey for me. Blessed are the gossips, for they are my secret agents. Blessed are those critical of church leadership, for they shall inherit a place with me in my fate. Blessed are the complainers, I'm all ears for them. Blessed are you when you read this. I think it is about other people and not yourself. I've got you. You're blessed from Matthew chapter 5, the message. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Well, thank you all <clears throat> for those readings. Please accept my words, Heavenly Father, to help us with understanding the challenges that we face as Christians today. Well, I'm sure most of you have either read or have heard of Lewis Carroll's book, Alison in Wonderland. Everything is back to front in the place Alice visits. There's a talking white rabbit. And even though rabbits can run fast, and this one has a pocket watch, he's always running late. Queen of Hearts does nothing to live up to her name. She's always saying, off with her head. And then there's that rude Mad Hatter, who's always rebuking Alice for her rudeness. Alice in Wonderland is a story that certainly engages our Im imagination as we try to understand what it was like for Alice to make sense of the back to front upside down world in which she found herself. This morning I'm going to ask us to use our imagination. Uh, we aren't going to be a, a, perhaps imagine what it's like to meet white rabbits or mad hatters, but let's pretend to be something much more ordinary. Um, let's think about a common fly. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be able to walk upside down on the ceiling like a fly? Well, first of all, we are comfortable walking upside down. In fact, to us, this isn't upside down at all. Walking on the ceiling is so normal that anyone who isn't walking upside down is regarded just a little, a little strange. Flies have been living that way for millions of years. And flies like it this way, it's, I presume. It's a normal thing for flies to do. But then, then, along comes a Jew, black hair and beard and dark eyes, and he has a strange way of walking on the ground, which is upside down to us. 
and he calls out to us on the ceiling, hey you up there, don't you feel a bit stupid living upside down? And we all say, no way, we like it this way. In fact, we're not upside down at all. You're the one who's upside down, or downside up to be more accurate. Doesn't it worry you that you are the only person who is walking that way? Why don't you join us here on the ceiling? Yeah, are you kidding? Answers the Jew with the dark eyes and black beard. I haven't come to copy our ways. I've come to save you and to show you a new way of living. Well, what makes you think we need saving? Comes the reply from one of those on the ceiling. And who are you to tell us we need a new way of living? Our forefathers, who buzzed around the ears of Abraham and around his camels, live like this? Who are you to tell us we need to turn our lives upside down or downside up? We're not perfect, but we're nice flies, and we do a pretty good job at being the best flies we can. What we do has worked in the past. We're happy with that. We don't care if you think it's upside down. Go away. We don't need your help. And suddenly, in an amazing way, the man with the black beard does a somersault and lands upside down on the ceiling beside the flies. In fact, he becomes a fly. Although some of the flies refuse to believe that this is the same person who a moment ago was downside up. Don't jump to any conclusions, the now upside down Jew says. I'm not here to agree with you. I'm here to really convince you in the best fly language I know that your values, your goals, your attitudes, your spirituality is all upside down. I want to show you a new way, a better way. My new way might seem to be upside down to you, but really it is the right way around. It's the way things are meant to be between you and your creator and between you and one another. This is the truth. In fact, I am the truth. I will turn your world upside down. It's, it's the only way. Every fly glares at him with a million eyes, flexing all six biceps, laughing at this strange fly and his back to front ideas. But there are a few, about a dozen, who are drawn to this downside up Jewish fly. This new teacher fly gathers Pete, Andy, Johnny, Jimmy, Phil, Bart, Matt, Jude and a few others and says, you know how it is in this upside down world of yours. Everyone is happy to squash anyone who gets in the way so they can get ahead. It's a buggy bug world. Well, it's certainly not like, not like that in my new world. If anyone in my new world wants to be great, they must get their hands dirty and serve others. If you want to be in the running for the citizen of the year, be happy to be a lowly servant. Be ready to love your enemies. Forgive others even if they are unkind to you. Expect to see the most unlikely people in my new world. The poor, the hungry, the sad and the excluded. And with that, the larger mob loses interest. It makes no sense in their upside down fly world whereas every fly from himself. The smaller group head down the upside down road, following the Jew fly with the black beard and the dark eyes to a cross, where he dies even for those who hate him. So back to front. This Jew fly was so upside down to those of his time and to many today that they rejected the new way he offered. But to those in his new world, he is the only one who is the right side up. Well, I hope I didn't lose you in all that talk about flies and being upside down and downside up. It's Alice in Wonderland language where everything that would seem normal is all back to front and strange. But the point is made that everything about Jesus is so upside down. It's not what you would expect. You begin with his birth. He comes to earth via the womb of a young, young unknown girl, born in a stable, poor in, poor, in danger, a refugee. That is such an upside down world for the almighty and everlasting God to enter our world. His life then is simple, a wandering teacher, mixing with the lowliest and poorest 
the disease, the outcast, and he speaks a simple message of love for God and one another, living out the message that in everything he did, so unlike the Messiah that had been expected. Now this back to front wandering rabbi can't be the Messiah, can he? And his death on the cross, on a Roman cross, so cruel, so humili humiliating, so shameful, so painful. And, it's, and yet he was so innocent. Such a difficult thing to understand, even for those who are closest to him. The Messiah on a cross. That is so wrong. Everything about Jesus is so upside down. And then we look through the Bible and there are all those strange sayings. Those who want to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and the gospel will save it. If any of you wants to be great, you must be the servant of the rest. And if anyone wants to be first, you must be the slave of all. And of course, Jesus' words in our text today, his Sermon on the Mount, which plainly states that the blessed in his new kingdom are the opposite of what you might expect. In this world, the poor, the hated, the marginalized, the hungry, the persecuted are hardly considered blessed, but God sees them differently. It's to these people Jesus served, touched, hugged, and healed while others avoid, avoided them. Jesus is back to front, upside down. The ways of the kingdom of God are not the same as that of the rest of the world. When Jesus defines greatness, he uses words like love, humility, service, kindness, meekness, mercy, servant, slave, losing one's life, and says that anyone who has these attributes is considered great in God's kingdom. Because of the love Christ has for us and the love of Christ reflected in us, attitudes, behaviors, and values are changed. What is great in God's kingdom is often different to what is considered great in the world. It might be considered great in the world to put down those who don't want to achieve or ridicule people who are different, but greatness in God's kingdom is to show kindness and offer help and encourage them to get ahead. It might be considered great in the world to unkindly criticize others and gossip about them. But in God's kingdom, greatness means to defend others, to be supportive, speak a kind word, be the voice of those who have no voice. In Jesus' time, and even today, people felt that they could ignore the poor because they somehow deserved to be poor. It's easy to dismiss offhandedly the hungry and poor in our society because of our welfare system even. It's easy to look after our own needs first and avoid the pleas of others. But in God's kingdom, greatness means to give food to the poor, a cup of water to the thirsty, shelter to the homeless, visit the sick and clothe the naked. Following these upside down ways is never easy. They are challenging. They make us re-examine whether we are following Jesus or being influenced by the values of our culture and our society. Jesus' upside down ways will make us and can make us at times feel terribly guilty as we realize that we choose to go down the easy path, follow popular trends, do the in thing rather than take the harder path of humility and service. But I think it's just when we're being hard on ourselves for getting it all wrong, when God's upside down love beams down on us. And I call that, and we should call it grace. Yes, we fail. We think greatness can be all about us. We can ignore the people God gives us to serve. We can let God down. And what does God do? Well, he loves us. He loves us and forgives us and embraces us as his children for whom Jesus has died. So let us thank God for his grace that turns everything upside down and makes everything the right way around. 
Thank you, Lord, for your guidance, your encouragement, and your love throughout our time here on earth. Amen. Let us join together in an affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Throughout our time here on earth, we need to approach our God, recognizing the weaknesses we have and asking for his power to support us, his grace. So let's sing, Lord, I come to you. Let us pray. God of the prophets, God of Christ, we are reminded today that your blessings do not necessarily follow the logic of the world. We pray for a more just world in which we have all have enough and none are left behind. Amen. 
in a society divided by race, gender, class, ideology, and sexual orientation, and so many other labels we alone have created. Remind us that we are created in your image, each of us a beautiful reflection of you, each of us your beloved child. Amen. Gracious God, you have so richly blessed us with life, with love and joy, with hope in the midst of despair. Help us to be the salt of the earth. Help us to be the light of the world, sharing with others that which have also received, boldly proclaiming the good news of your love, finding the seeds of your kingdom within us, and letting your way grow in our lives and throughout the world. Lord, we gather in your presence, just as the multitudes did so many years ago on a hill in Galilee. We gather not only to hear your word to us, but also bring the joy, our joys and concerns of our lives to you. <clears throat> the bidding for today's prayers on the service sheet is, Lord, hear your people. Would you please all respond with and answer our prayers? Yeah. Lord, hear your people and yeah. respond yeah. with our prayers. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Our spirit can be poor in so many ways. We lift up those who struggle with addiction, mental illness, physical illness, violence, oppression and fear. Each of these tears apart what you have created and their daily burden attacks the very essence of who we are. We pray for freedom from these struggles, for us and for those known only to you. We claim your promise that we belong to you in this life and the life to come. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There are many things we mourn in this life. Loss due to health, due to aging, losses of jobs and relationships. These losses are very real and very difficult. And we find comfort knowing that you also wept and mourned loss in your own life. We claim your promise of peace a peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Lord, we do not desire to inherit the things of this earth, but pray for humility and grace as we live our lives. Our inheritance comes through you, who overcame the powers of earth, so that we may be with you both in life and death. We claim your promise that we shall all in your share in your inheritance. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus told us that we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and the things we need will be provided. Help us to trust in your words, that when we speak, when we seek you, loving mercy, acting justly, walking humbly, that you will provide. Give us the courage to stand up to injustice, even when we are afraid. We claim your promises that one day justice will roll down like waters, and righteousness like a stream. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. In a few moments, we will, we will pray, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. In teaching us this prayer, you taught us also how to be merciful. Help us to let go of our pride 
so that we might find reconciliation in our relationships. Help us to see those who we see as other, those who are homeless, the immigrant, the violent, the foreigner, as our brother and sister, your beloved child. We claim your promise of mercy as we are merciful to others. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Violence seems to rule the world, whether in the streets of our towns, the mountains of Afghanistan, the deserts of Syria and Iraq, or the cities of Africa. We are killing each other. Lord, forgive us. We pray not only for the absence of conflict, but for true peace, where weapons become instruments to tend crops and harvest trees, and there shall be no more war. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Most of us do not know about persecution, especially for righteousness sake. May we be aware of those who suffer and even died, die as they stand up for justice, liberation and peace and basic human rights. As we gather so freely to worship you this morning, we pray for safety for those who risk prison and death. Shield them from danger as they boldly proclaim your word. Strengthen us so that we may be willing to stand up for what we know is true. We claim your promise that your kingdom is greater than all the kingdoms of the world. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ and bringing all our prayers together in one, in the prayer that Jesus taught us, in whatever form or language that suits. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. During these, during these long weeks of lockdown and now slow release, we've been serving God in many ways through Pilgrim, In It Together, Zoom, YouTube, House of Bread Support, Buddy and Link Systems, and many, many unspoken and unheard of probably acts of kindness. We're called to go out and to serve God. So let us join together in our final hymn. Thank you.
Well, my thank you to Paul for having put that very thought-provoking service together, flying upside down. Lots to think about and for for finding those readings of the Beatitude and uh, to Jerry particularly for the way that you uh, delivered that for us, but also to our other readers and to Ian for leading our intercessions. If you've joined us on YouTube, you've been very welcome and it's been great that you've been with us. And if you want to join us again, you'll find our websites and my email address in the description of the video as you enter into it. So we close with the words of blessing and then a final dismissal. May God the Father bring us to the home which his Son prepares for all who love him. May God the Son give us the will to live for him each day in life eternal. May God the Holy Spirit give us the assurance that our citizenship is in heaven with the blessed and the beloved and the whole company of the redeemed and the blessing of god almighty father son and holy spirit be with you and all whom you love now and forevermore so go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen <laughs>